Hi everyone and welcome back. So I've just spent my entire Christmas break researching Tava squishies, and this video will tell you everything you need to know about this new trend. Join me on my quest to make a buff Hello Kitty Tava squishy, which turned out to be a lot harder than I expected. The word Taba means bundle in Japanese, which makes a lot of sense because this type of squishy always comes in these little bags that look like fake packaging. You're essentially playing with a bundle of different textures and objects. This is a Taba squishy that I got from Timu, and I know this isn't the best example because I think it's actually a large mochi squishy. Taba squishies are much softer and stickier, with the so-called water texture, because it should look like liquid when you press on it. So of course I'm going to answer the biggest question first. What are these super soft squishies made of? This is often confusing because many Taba squishy creators refer to the liquid as glue. You see captions in their videos talking about using silicone glue or AB glue. So I went into Xiaohongshu, which is the Chinese app where Tabas first went viral, and realized that this is basically a mistranslation. In Chinese, the liquid that they use is called nie nie jiao, which translates directly into squishy glue. I'm not actually sure if this is a reverse mistranslation of the English term squishy gel, because jiao and gel sound very similar. In any case, this liquid is 100% silicone and it has nothing to do with glue. And obviously, the next question is, how do they get the silicone so soft? As you might know from my previous videos, the hardness of silicone is measured using the Shore scale. Shore zero or double zero is usually the softest form of industrial silicone that you can buy, and everything above that gets increasingly firmer. If you want to make the silicone even softer, then there are several options which I've investigated quite a bit. Number one is to add deadener, which is a material that makes the silicone stickier and more skin-like. Number two is messing with the mixing ratio, so you can deliberately add less of one polymer, which prevents the silicone from curing properly. Number three is that they're using an entirely new type of silicone, which is softer by default. I found a great channel on Xiaohongshu from a factory that manufactures silicone, and the answer is that it's actually both two and three. They're using a brand new type of silicone that has a shore rating of less than zero, which is very rare to find. Even if you mix it in the correct ratio of one to one, it cures in a texture that's softer than a mochi squishy. However, Tava creators are taking this a step further and using mixing ratios of one to two or even one to three to create ridiculously soft pieces. Some are so sticky that they have to be covered with powder before you can even touch them, which is why you often see flocked Taba squishies as well. So knowing all of this, it's time to make my own. I posted a poll a few weeks ago and the majority of you wanted to see a buff Hello Kitty. Just like the Pokemon squishies, I need to design this on paper first. I'm using Jigglypuff as a reference, but I don't feel the feet are working here. I kind of envision Hello Kitty with longer legs, so I'm coming up with a few different versions. I really like how this one turned out, so this is going to be the basis for my polymer clay model. I'm going to sculpt this using Fimo Kids, which is softer and slightly easier to work with than the regular Fimo. To make the ears, I'm creating a diamond shape and then cutting it in half, which ensures that both pieces are the same size. Then I'm smoothing down the edges really well, so there's no risk of the clay being pulled apart during the molding process. Next, I'm adding the ribbon, which is always on Hello Kitty's right ear when you're looking at it from the front. Then I'm stacking on the muscles, and once again making sure these are firmly attached to the body. I'm very pleased with how this turned out, and it looks very similar to the sketch. Now I'm baking this for 30 minutes at 110 degrees Celsius until the clay is hard. I try to keep my polymer clay models as small as possible in order to cut costs on molding putty. I bought some silicone putty from Timu just because it's cheaper, but I noticed that this tends to flatten down faster compared to other brands. So once I've pressed the model inside, I have to keep my hands cupped around the mold for a few minutes until it starts to cure. If I don't do this, then the silicone starts to flatten down and lose its shape a bit. To make the actual Taba squishies, I'm going to be using Hitohara gel and Sophie and Toffee squishy gel. 
This is because tapas squishies basically have the same texture as overly sticky mochi squishies. I've made so many videos in the past where my failed attempts look almost identical to what tapas are supposed to be. So now I'm going to deliberately recreate that consistency. Hito Hada Gel was the first squishy maker I ever tried, and if you remember those videos, you'll know that this is extremely tricky to work with. When mixed according to the package instructions, it almost never cures or ends up very sticky. So this time, I'm going to try doing exactly that. Milky Hito Hada Gel has a mixing ratio of 3 to 1, and Clear Hito Hada Gel has a ratio of 1 to 1. Both are supposed to cure after 24 hours, but in my own experience, the curing time can range from several days, one week, or never curing. I'm filling up both molds and just hoping for the best. Now moving on to Sophie and Toffee Squishy Gel. This has always been my favorite silicone to work with because it cures almost perfectly every time. I know they have a new Squishy Gel out with a new formula, but I'm saving that one for a future video. For this video, I only want to stay with materials that I've used before so I have some experience of what to expect. The mixing ratio should be 1 to 1, but I'm going to add slightly less hardener in hopes of making the final result stickier. I'm also adding some squishy gel coloring to get that white Hello Kitty color. Another feature of Tabba Squishies is that the color has to be inside the silicone itself whenever possible. This is because any details you paint on can easily get rubbed off inside the plastic bag. So I'm also mixing up a batch of pink squishy gel to make these cat paws that you see everywhere. And here are all the squishies after 24 hours. Unfortunately, but not surprisingly, the Hito Hada gel hasn't cured at all. This was my experience in all of my previous videos, and I'd normally use a lot more hardener. So I'm going to set these aside and just wait to see if anything happens. The squishy gel has cured very nicely, despite playing around with the mixing ratios. This is almost a bit too smooth, because Tabba Squishy should stick to your finger when you press on it. I'm trying to get this out as gently as I can, but I realize that it's really sticking to the mold. Unfortunately, that's just the downside of such a complex design, which has lots of small sharp corners. In the end, I have to call this a failure because part of the body ripped off and I also saw that there's a noticeable layer of white paint across the front. I think I might have used a bit too much pigment, which settles to the bottom and makes it even harder to get out. Interestingly, the cat paw I made with the same batch of silicone came out without any problems. This one is very close to being a perfect tabba texture. I think the smaller shape and smooth mold really made a difference. The same goes for these clear cat paws, which look super aesthetic and almost edible. Again, the bigger squishy made with the same batch of polymer didn't come out properly, and I think it's just because the silicone is so fragile to work with. Larger tabba squishies are always going to cause you more problems. The next thing I really want to try is flocking. This is not a new crafting technique, and you can get flocking powder very easily from Amazon. It sometimes comes with an adhesive that lets you create a fuzzy surface on any object. It's important to mention that real flocking powder is extremely fine. It looks like little balls of wool in the bag, but you can break this up into tiny particles. A lot of cheap tabba squishies like this one from Timu are not made with real flocking. They contain some kind of fake fur or fuzz, and you can see that the fibers are much larger. If you're using real flocking powder, then you have to wear a protective mask because this stuff shouldn't be inhaled. Obviously, after a pandemic, it's pretty easy to find masks everywhere, so please remember to take safety precautions. I'm using a tiny amount here and breaking it up with a stick. Then I'm rolling the squishy inside and the natural stickiness is perfect for creating that fuzzy surface. As you can see, this is the ideal texture for a fluffy tab of squishy, and not the one with long white fibers from Timu. I'm still determined to create a buff Hello Kitty, so I'm going to try again. Since the biggest problem I had was getting it out in one piece, I'm going to try out two methods to make the mold less sticky. First is this iridescent pigment, which I'm going to brush onto the entire inside. I'm hoping that the powder will form a barrier between the squishy gel and the mold, which makes it easier to remove. This time, I also added less white coloring to minimize the risk of paint settling onto the bottom. 
Next comes this mold release spray. I'm not a huge fan of this because a liquid barrier can easily pool into the small areas of the mold and create holes in the final squishy. This was a big problem in my last video here. I'm using some tissue to ensure that the inside is covered with the thinnest possible layer of mold release. And just to be safe, I also mixed this batch with slightly more hardener. Then I left all of these alone for a week. Unfortunately, after all this time, there was no difference at all with the milky and clear Hitohata gels. Hitohata gel sometimes cures after many days if you leave it alone, but in this case, I'm fairly certain that nothing will happen. So I ended up throwing out both of these batches. Sophie and Toffee squishy gel has cured as expected, but the bigger challenge would be demolding this. I love the texture of this one and think it would make a perfect tabo. However, as I'm trying to get it out, I'm realizing that the powder doesn't have any effect on the stickiness. The silicone is stuck just as firmly as before, and I can't get it out without ripping. It's such a shame, but I think the design is just a bit too complex for the very soft texture of a tapestry. But thankfully, I still have the second one, which I made using mold release and a slightly firmer silicone. This one came out without any problems. I really need to try the soft silicone with a mold release, but I'll save it for a future video. To paint on the details, I'm definitely mixing some glue with the paint to help it stick better. Tapas squishies have a unique problem in that they're in direct contact with a plastic bag, so the risk of paint rubbing off is much higher. So the best option with tapas is to choose a mold where you can add colored silicone beforehand, like the cat paw design, or simply keep your details to a minimum and in areas that don't get squashed easily. I've also seen tapas squishies use black plastic needle felting eyes, which I think is a pretty clever idea. Now let's move on to the packaging. Not all plastic bags are the same, so it's important to pick the right ones when making tapas. This one is made from thin cellophane and you can find it almost anywhere. I'm going to test the squishability of this bag using an old friend, the pink koala from my very first DIY squishy video. A key factor of tapas squishies is the water texture, which means it should look like liquid when you press on it. This bag produces that effect quite nicely, but it's just not strong enough to be squished repeatedly. Cellophane doesn't have elasticity, so after a while you'll see permanent wrinkles and lines in your bag. The next type of plastic bag is the Ziploc one, which is commonly used for food. This type of plastic is a bit too soft, so instead of creating the water texture, it just wrinkles and sticks to the squishy. What you need is this sort of bag, which you've probably seen on many viral Tavo videos. The material is PVC or EVA, and it's strong enough to bounce back without producing any permanent wrinkles. This type of bag is very hard to find in shops, but you can get them easily over Amazon or Timu. You have to search for PVC self-sealed jewelry bag and you should be able to find it. The next part is the packaging card. The easiest option would just be to make this yourself, but if you have lots of tabs to sell, then you might need multiples of the same design. I found these on Timu by looking through small business supplies. And now we can finally assemble our squishy. The first tip is to avoid any opaque or very chunky glitter. The inside of the bag produces static, so all the glitter will end up sticking to your squishy and it might cover up any details. I'm also adding some pom-poms because I love the contrast between all these different textures. The bag I'm using feels a bit tall, so I'm simply going to trim off the end. Then I'm stapling the card into place and my first tab of squishy is ready. For the second one, I'm creating a trio of cat paws and the texture of these are so soft. I'm also including the little fluffy flocked one. The best part of tabas squishies is that they never get dirty, so you can play with them for a long time. There's also very little chance of anything breaking. Aesthetically, these are amazing because you have so many different elements coming together. It's that type of sensory overload I love when looking at Japanese shop displays. Lots of people watching this are probably keen to make their own tabas squishies. The biggest hurdle at the moment is that the super soft silicone is not widely available worldwide. However, you can improvise by using existing types of silicone, such as Elmer's Secret Solution, and then use some of the methods from my videos to make them softer. 
Be sure to use mold release or Vaseline because tabas are pretty hard to demold. I hope you enjoyed this video and please stay tuned for more tabas cushy tutorials in future. I'm Joanna, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!